It is uh, 6 p.m. Monday, August 16th, the select board meeting um, beginning at 6 p.m. So first item on the agenda to approve the minutes of August 9th. Just, I, I thought the minutes were especially detailed. And they look good to me. Yeah. My only comment was that it says that um, Bob Anderson was present. Oh, oh is it? <laughs> I, I get called that I, all I the time. I can't tell you how often. I Otherwise, since I wasn't there, I, I didn't have. And then here in Conway, there is a Bob Anderson. There is. Yes. Yeah, so it's especially confusing. As long as it says Bob Armstrong, there you <laughs> go. then I'm good. Um, so we have a motion to approve as amended. As amended. Yeah. Second. Uh, second. Good. Good. All, all in favor? Yep. Unanimous. Um, next item, approve the warrants. We have three warrants. Um, there's an accounts payable warrant, W22-05 for $277,940.71. We have a payroll warrant, PW22-05 for $88,762.57. And the payroll deduction warrant, PDW 22-05 for $21,307.50. Um, and I can, from, from going through them, the, the biggest item on all of these from the accounts payable warrant was almost $200,000 for um, highway paving material for the projects that are going on on uh, uh, Poland Road and East King Road. And there's one other road as well. But, that's where almost all that went. Um, the, the amount of money that we paid got 37,000 cubic yards of asphalt. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> My we'll race through it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know they will. Um, so since we met last week, meetings attended by- So oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll second. Uh, yes, okay, good. I think that was I'm a sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So motion, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So, aye. aye. Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Anybody? Uh, we had a conservation commission meeting. And that's uh, good. None since our last. Same, same here. I wish it could stay that way. Unfortunately, <laughs> we when, unfortunately <laughs> Wednesday is the big public meeting to determine whether you mask up or to go to school mm. again. And uh, yes, the comments. Is from concerned for second. Um, public comments. There's no public, old business, no old business to discuss. New business. Um, we have a recommendation from Lee Whitcomb to appoint Lori Lucier, who is our current elected town clerk, as the assessor's clerk. So you want to fill us in on the details? Um, sure. She, so uh, we had posted this job a couple of weeks ago, and um, to the best of my knowledge, Louise, correct me if I'm wrong, there was actually nobody else who applied, um, but we're thrilled to have had Lori apply. Um, she is uh, hoping to move, potentially move down to this building, and then um, there would be a lot more coverage for the public if she were down here as town clerk and clerk of the board of assessors. Um, so I think it's a wonderful move. I think it would give the residents a lot more um, customer service, so to speak. So I'm personally, I'm very much in favor. I think she's done a great job as town clerk, so yeah. I can't see why she. And what will happen with her space up there? Well, we're in discussions right now with the board of health about whether or not um, they're willing to just swap the offices and have the Board of Health go up to be in the town clerks. And, mm -hmm. um, and I did have, um, there were some concerns about the weight of cabinets, if that switch were made, but I did speak with the Jim Hawkins, the building inspector, and we're very good to go. Oh, good. Yes. Um, so do we have a motion? Um, yeah, I move to um, appoint Lori Lucier as assessor's clerk. And is there a time? Is, is this this is not an expiring appointment. This is as a part-time employee. Just like a yes. Right. Although that would be a discussion for another time because I understand every employee is reappointed every year. 
This so is true. Something, this is true. So, yeah. So, so that is true. <laughs> yes. So we appoint her for the uh, duration of the fiscal year. Yes. Uh, uh, second. And it's effective immediately. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So um, I actually, I, I, I have one and that's the, I don't know if everybody else saw the preliminary census results that came out for Conway. Um, and just saw that we brought. like deeply depressing, oh, wow. deeply, uh, I, deeply <laughs> distressing. So I, I saw the state map that showed 5% reduction, but, or at least 5%. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 we're 7.8%. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and um, 180, we lost 180 people. And what little, um, what, what little diversity we had as the Census Bureau defines it, um, according to, I would think, find it, um, the, you know, Pacific Islander, Asian, Latino, everything, the, those numbers actually went, were cut in half in the 10 years. And, um, and, and the other thing, when you, when you look at um, our, our, the annual, the, the uh, average family income, the average tech, the income went from 68,000 to 89,000. And so we, so we have an, an income um, that's growing and a population that's declining. Mm -hmm. And the result is we're going to get less of our tax money than the, the, as a percentage than maybe like ever before. And I know somebody had already done a calculation a few years back that showed that we, we were already getting something like only 80% of the taxes that we generate and give to Boston back in revenue. And this is gonna cut that down substantially, you know, by another 8%. Because I mean, first off the bat, chapter 90 funding follows population. And, um, and this isn't just a cut in the rate of increase or whatever, this is a, this would be, a, this is a really bad news. Um, and, it, uh, the general revenue, uh, the, the, what was that chapter 50, whatever, the, the, the just the general municipal revenue accounts, they're, they're all going to go down. And so much follows the census numbers. So, um, the, the, and when, when I really, so I, I tried to spend some time like looking at the number and looking at the, so the, the census every two years had been doing the, the AC at America Community Survey population estimates for the, all across the country. And they had us at um, at 1900 something just a couple years ago. And it's just, and, and I looked at housing starts approved. And in the past 10 years, we've had something like 30 new homes, more than 30 new homes constructed. And we look at the, K, the Comcast stuff when we, we had the chart of how many occupied homes there were at Conway. And it was 860 something. Yeah. And I'm like putting all that together. And, you know, did they make a mistake with the zip code? So many of our zip code is the Shelburne Falls and Ashfield. Did, like, and, and, and so there, my understanding is that there is a process now that they release preliminary information for towns to somehow get a double check or whatever. And so, uh, you know, I, 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 this number is so drastic. And it's, when, when you look at Franklin County, Franklin County's population as a whole declined by like 220 people. Conway's with almost all of that. <laughs> and I'm like, how could that be? And it's, there, there was uh, a state map that just color coded all the town. Yeah, so Conway. Yeah, we were like, out. and we I were just, in the top ten as yeah. far as population. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I just, um, and I, I see, you know, I saw Ashfield had a two percent loss. Uh, Goshen had like a three percent loss. So those to me are were like reasonable um, numbers yeah. that are more or less. Expensive. But a, an eight percent loss for us when we've had no, you know, the tornado didn't wipe out our. Be interesting to see what Williamsburg did because we have a lot of people that live that have yeah they Williamsburg. Had, they, had, they had a modest gain. I looked at all of our direct so, names. They they had like a two percent gain. Yeah. And Waitley had a seven percent gain. And Sunderland had a four for whatever. Deerfield had a two percent. So that's that's even worse that our in, within our schools. It, the, the regional thing, we're the only one of the four town that lost population. And I, I just have a hard time believing the number. But it's easy and, to imagine Williamsburg people, Conway people who live, who have Williamsburg post offices. Right, right. Hmm. And, I, and I know that there's something like 
um, 100 residents that, that have zip codes outside of 01341. It, it, and some have it, some have it in, in the Shelburne Falls Post Office, the ones um, in the uh, Shirkshire, the, the, um, some have As an Asfield Post Office, and some have a Williamsburg Post Office. So, I, and I, that's always been um, an issue with a lot of people about how that, that there's a belief that this. Do you know how to look bad. that up? You, I mean, I, I, you mean who's where? I, I know Louise has that. Find out how people got counted. Well, I, I, I'm going to look into this because I can tell you that I know that there's also the same concern about um, towns in Western Mass getting the wrong count um, when it comes to who's been vaccinated because of the zip code issue. Mm. So that's actually an issue for us out here. So that, yeah. But because this is a federal issue, yeah. I think, you know, this might be time for our first outreach to our Congressman Richie Neal and uh, to his office. Okay. And, um, and, you know, can remind him that he was last here the day of the tornado. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but we're still his constituents and this is a serious thing that it just doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. Well, especially um, if that's true, if if Franklin County lost 220 people and yeah. 180 of them came from Conway, that's just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just not, um, uh, you know, so, so and, and then the other thing was I had a conversation with a realtor friend of mine who said, you know, that, they, that it was a topic of the monthly Franklin County realtors dinner Friday night or something that they, they talked about census numbers and everybody commented that they didn't, that everybody had a hard time believing that Conway lost that much, that it's nothing is for sale, nothing's been for sale. Mm -hmm. it, it's still hard to buy a house here. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough houses is everybody's opinion. And um, they, they just didn't see 180 population loss and neither did I. So, and then they did the school. So yeah. um, I don't know how they did that. But it's an important enough number that we really need to yeah. do something. For 10 years, it's an important like, number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, like an 8% loss in, in highway department revenue alone mm -hmm. is just, that's just really bad. But if they release it early for towns to look at the numbers, yes. that implies there's a, a way to. Especially this cycle. They, sus that. they suspect that there may have been more errors this cycle than ever before because of the rushed nature and politicized mm -hmm. nature and everything and even though the agency itself is like filled with good career people that like tried to do their best whatever so um, yeah yeah so so that was that was my thing i when i looked at the numbers and i really the ramifications of it all begin to sink in like th that's really bad news so eight percent loss of population means eight percent loss of government of revenues from government and um that's like every year so yeah but other than that everything's been great and it's been a great 48 hours um so we have a town administrator update i i actually don't really have much of one today it's there's been a lot going on but nothing in specific to report on um select board member comments and concerns Um, mail, we didn't really have anything. Just, I guess we had a lot of email comments about um, loss of electricity on Main Poland Road in the general vicinity of the Nexam Solar Project. And um, I did see that there was a response from Eversource that attributed it to, and supplied documentation, specific documentation of a couple instances that it was a tree falling and that the pop is sound that every the the sound that it's working the way it should loud explosions that means it's working great um so uh, i'm sure it's really yeah sure because that, 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 that that's the equivalent of being in your house and the breaker shutting off loudly that you can hear all throughout the house and it means the power is automatically in that second or two that it goes out comes back on the power is being rerouted from a different direction but loud bangs good that means equals good so 
So um, we did. We had a power outage in our house a couple of weeks ago, um, and I was going to go back and look and see what the dates were. Because I mean, I like I always as soon as I had a power outage, I report it immediately, even if it's my fault, <laughs> for whatever reason. And, and actually, that was one of the points they said is that uh, um, my understanding is that not very many people, if anybody, reported these. And the number, just to put this out there, is um, to report any power outages is eight seven seven six five nine six three two six. And they really would like people to do that because they can't investigate a problem when they don't have a record of it having yeah. happened. One of the things that I worry is that, that Nexamp said that they were going to hold off turning their array back on and, until they could be assured that Eversource had whatever the problem was, that they felt that somehow they were triggering something in the Eversource substation. So we should make sure next year hears that Eversource is saying it's not them. Yeah, apparently they did. So that would be good. So they, they then they can try to turn it back on again. So that's, but yeah. Um, and ever, the people from Eversource were clear that some of the complaints didn't seem not to have ever resulted in a call to their number. So they, they can't know about that. Um, and let's see the other. Um, so I have a mail that I forwarded to Verity, but some, I got a, a let an email from somebody named Corey Hardy. I don't know who he is, saying that he's interested in uh, starting the process of of entering into a host agreement with Conway. So, so Verity is going to follow up on that. Yeah, that's a, we, we need to take a look at our host agreement well, again, because it's already outdated. We have a process, yeah. so, and, and part of that process is, is, is what we require, yeah. So before we send it out to him, we should maybe put that on the agenda for next time. Good. And um, what we want is to ask the town of Deerfield for their community host agreement. And uh, just because I saw theirs, and it's good, yeah, good, good. better. I, I think Tom may have had that in the file, actually. All right, but I, I did not happen to find um, a process for going through it. I just found samples from other towns. Yeah, the the first pro the first process would be to upon request to send out the document to the person requesting it. And, Right, um, but yeah. in other words, there wasn't like with the 61A, you know, when Ross had this wonderful checklist and I, I don't I don't see anything like that in files for like, this community thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because it's it's the only part of the process that the select board really does on their own. Everything else is the planning board. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we should actually, I actually had meant to set to discuss with the chairs of the planning board, just whether they were satisfied with the current um, HCA agreement and um, whether they had thought about changes since we've lived it now twice. Mm -hmm. I know we all talked about how they would, we'd like to see improvements in it. So no time like the present. But no, I do not know that individual in any way, shape, or form. And um, I think the luster has gone off on that whole industry for me just because of the restraints and the amount of municipal revenue that you can get. Uh, we, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and what else was there? The, uh, The next meeting is going to be two weeks from today, which is the 30th. Monday, the 30th. And um, I know we're going to, there's already an item on the agenda that's going to be for that for uh, to discuss the McLeish writing cottage. Mm -hmm. And um, and that may be, a, may be some people that want us to have a fall town meeting. Like a special meeting? Yes. And that, that 
we may, there might be some other people that want us to have a fall town meeting so that we can alter the conditions of um, previous town meeting grants of behavior. Uh, so, um, so we'll see. We'll see about that. But that's and um, good. Yeah, it was interesting, but it'll wait. It'll wait for two weeks. So the. Um, that being said, it is 620. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't think it's a new record, but no, 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 no. 620 is pretty good. So yeah. stand adjourned at 620. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.